goodness with face, pat, and tiz. Well, I got a question. What time? That was about to be my question. What time is it? Well, well, um, looking at my watch, I can't tell you my watch. Hey, can you tell me what time it is? Right now, it's actually 11.10, and it's about to be 11.11 in a couple of seconds. Oh, yeah, and it's also um, time for the good and fuckery, yeah! 11.11! Beautiful numerology. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit! Mm -hmm. Episode 43. Dang. Good and fuckery. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. My inner whip. um, Wi-Fi kicked out. Fuckeration, I'm in. Good and fuckeration. Fuckeration coming in. That good and that fucked up fuckery. Fuck him. 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 Shouts out to Birdie Mac. Birdie. Fuck him. 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 When you say that in the house party three, fuck him, girl. Oh, that was awesome. Fuck him. Fuck him, girl. Well, let me get let me start off uh, episode 43, good and fuckery, off with the song of the week. And y'all might already know it, but the song of the week is one part of the life, uh, life of the party song that was Indeed. supposed to be on Donda, Indeed. with Andre 3000's verse. Indeed. So, um, I'm sorry. It's like I had I had to listen to that. It was like you know, none of the else that I'm listening to right now matters. <laughs> it is a very transcendent, transcend, transcendent verse. <laughs> God damn, boy, that shit was strong. I went to Transylvania. Tra- trans- God damn, boy, I was killing that down word. Stop it before you offend somebody. <laughs> yeah good point <laughs> so um it's just and we we probably going to talk about these elements later but it, it was just so much in that vo- verse that like nothing else that i listened to for the rest of the week really compete with that it was like you know i really like this but i still think i can find something in that andre verse that i'm probably just haven't hit before because he didn't stop at 16 bars. He he kept going. He kept going to the soul stop. Pretty much. So, <clears throat> so today, uh, this week's, I mean, song of the week, Life of the Party, Andre 3000 verse. Life of the Party. Um, another new segment, Freestyle of the Week, Common on LA Leakers. Um, you know. Sometimes Common come out and you know you'll see him freestyling. He ain't really prepared, so he'll BS some some lines and you get a at the guy, the kata, the kata, the the guy, and then in the middle of the rhyme or whatever, and then he start rhyming again. Like uh yeah, what was that comment? But this freestyle had like I had to listen to it a couple of times. Like he casually freestyle all of we uh Will Smith's movies in a verse. And I didn't even catch it at first or whatever. Um, the line that stuck out the most was like, I bear arms like short sleeves, but he did it so like, he did it so smoothly that I didn't even catch it. It's like after the second listen, that's when I picked it up pretty much. And it, it's just that, you know, I haven't heard the bare arms line that was decent in a while, pretty much. But it's so many things like, like, he lyrically shouted out other rappers or whatever. And a lot of times when people do that, it just sounds corny or whatever. But he actually placed that within the verse or whatever. He just, and I mean, the whole um, interview before the free, uh, freestyle, he just seemed like he was ready to go in. He was just like, all right, yeah, I'm going to promote my um, new album that's out and everything. But um, yeah, I really want to get to the freestyle. Like he he just had that verse ready, so definitely freestyle of the week. Um, with that, 
I don't know because not that many people know about it, but it there's been some music that came out. Um, yeah, you know, I said Common, a beautiful revolution came out part two. I haven't listened to that yet, but I'm going to. Baby King came out, uh, the melodic blue, uh, AZ door door die two, and he got this track with with Rick Ross up there that's like fucking dope as shit or whatever. And and another little Wayne feature. Another freaking awesome Lil Wayne features AZ, Conway the Machine, and um, Lil Wayne on Do or Die 2. And Lil Wayne kills it. I ain't even gonna lie. That sounds pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> and Twister came out. I mean, his album called Shooter, Shooter Ready. And it's, it's exactly how it sounds in the album. It's an album dedicated to guns. This man found his new love of guns. Um, he know owns all his guns legally. He does tell you about it up there, and oh, uh, so far it's actually kind of hard. Like I, I haven't, like you know, twisted sometimes he got, you know, twisted sometimes he got that that dark undertone or whatever. But um, mm. oh, he got a song. I think it's uh, it's Black Rambo, and it's a drill song, and uh, drilling these turn. And it, it turns out Twister, which is, I mean, he is from Chicago. Twister on drill beats is a good, it's a good mesh. It's a good, it's a good, yeah. I, I need more drill and Twister. Pretty much. Put I'll together. Take... <clears throat> yeah, it is it's a real good mesh. Whatever. And then um, yeah, that, I just put that out there because it just seems like I would. I haven't heard too much about it, but probably because people still looking at listening to CLB or whatever. But yeah, those albums are out right now as we speak. It's Fat Joe versus John ja Rule versus. So we'll see the outcome of that later on. When Where's is that? Going that's going on right now? <laughs> that's going on right now. Oh, man. <clears throat> yep. Yep. You yep, yep. going in, Brett? Uh, I think it's going to be job, ja, man, but I think it's going to be close. Well, I feel like it's gonna, <clears throat> I think I it's going to be it. really close. I, it, I think Ja's of... going to win, but I got a feeling he's going to have more corny moments, so he's going to end up being a meme after this. Oh, yeah, he's going to have – it's going to be a meme. <clears throat> it's going to be a meme. And I just can't wait till Fat Joe um, basically – say you know he's going to have a um review or he's going to speak on something about that night on his instagram or something just like the uh locks and uh dips at verses so i, I can't wait right. to do that because that's probably going to be hilarious that's yeah. shit <clears throat> all right um just in case people didn't know jay-z through title said take the 500k there's a meme out there that says, would you take 500K or dinner with Jay-Z? Oh, yeah. You, definitely take the 500K. Take the 500K. He, he don't want to talk to you. And, yeah. and, and probably if it was Jay-Z and he was in the same boat, it was somebody he admired as much as everybody admires him, uh, he'd probably take that 500K and then become Jay-Z. <laughs> well, <laughs> he as probably, that's what he, he is, he probably wouldn't care about the 500K now. I'm, I'm saying if he was Being like in, in our position, position. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm not sure, but Jay Z and Jeff Bezos is going head to head with that Denver Broncos um, uh, bidding. bidding. Yeah, hold on, yeah. Jay Z trying to own the Broncos. Yeah, I said yeah. You. <laughs> mind you, that's why I put it in the, that's why I put it in the group shit. I sent you that. Yeah. Shit. I'm about Mind to you, my son and everybody in the house. He's a Cowboys fan, but you know he's big business. He's big business. So, so dead, this is big news for uh, for Tiz. He's a he's a, he's definitely a Denver Broncos fan. But, yes, that's huge, bro. That's fucking <laughs> huge, man. Now I'm gonna let you be known. I have nothing against the Broncos. The only reason I dislike them is because my brother loves them. The only reason I hate the Broncos. The only reason. 
petty as shit, right? But hey, oh, I don't oh, this. Oh, the hey, didn't y'all rivalry. lose Sunday? <laughs> I, I know we want to know. I'm just saying, did, did, didn't y'all lose Sunday? Uh huh. Oh, all right. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I just put, put this conversation in some proper context for this year. So we get things, you know, Jay Z want to buy us. Y'all uh-huh. over there losing this shit. I'm not trying to hear what you're talking about right now, man. Yeah, I'm shit. <laughs> yeah. That's why you couldn't keep, That's why you couldn't keep Antonio Brown. He's like 13, bro. I oh, hate Broncos just because of video games. That's why I hate him. Nothing oh, weird like Oh, the sibling he rivalry. <laughs> that's right. Used to whip your ass on Madden with him. On Madden 99, when you used to could turn up, you used to make them as big as you could. Nigga, have a seven foot, 500 pound <laughs> running back. <laughs> Deep the shit out. <laughs> kept, doing his, kept doing the mile high salute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sibling rivalries. Hey, that shit. Matter of fact, since we're talking about rivalries, I'm going to keep on with the rivalries or whatever. Okay. The VMAs. The VMAs popped off, like, uh, I think yesterday or something, or the, this weekend, yeah. pretty much. And um, we got a little bit of white on white crime. MGK versus Conor McGregor. They got into it at the VMAs. And, oh, uh, oh, oh, the white on white crime. Oh, so. we got to stop this, y'all. We gotta stop. Okay, this, this white I ain't gonna need front. I was going to get some water real quick. Did you say DNA? No, I said M- MGK and Conor McGregor got into it at the VMAs. Conor McGregor beat the shit out of MGK. I know, man. This white on white crime is terrible, man. Um, it, it's been going on for too long. Dog. They have to do some part to get out of control these days. You white on white crime, man. Yo. These school shootings, January 6th, man, the Civil War, <laughs> World War II, Revolutionary War. Jesus Christ. Oh, all oh, this. It's just, this is crazy. The France uh, vaccine <laughs> protest. Man, they got to do, they got to do something about all these white thugs out here just killing each other, and, you know, trying to hurt. The Hell's them. Angels. <laughs> fucking banging white men. It's just like freaking yeah, sons of anarchy out, out here, B. I don't it's make any sense. Every time I go to Walmart parking lot, I gotta lock my doors and make sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know, man, I, I, went to... I know Pat clutch his man bag and walk to the other side of the street. You darn right I did, man. <laughs> I live in Chesapeake. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Chesapeake. They be walking around like they just went hunting. What? Oh, man, that's funny. You can steal a country. You can steal my bag. man. I got my art pencils in this bag. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) You don't have to edit. Oh, I ain't editing shit. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! No no! No oh, no! That's thugging it out. We are gonna let that ride, baby. Oh man! Oh, oh man. man! I just be talking too much. <laughs> too little, much. A little, little bit. A little bit. Mm-hmm. That little bit. That's just a little. Just bit. Just a touch. A love. Love. Little bit. A little bit. I love that song. A little bit. A little bit. Just a touch of love. Let me spend some time. Just a touch of love. We need drunk Keith Sweat to do that rendition of that. Ay, ay, ay. Make sure you give him some Ciroc. Feel good like I knew you would. Ciroc. Come on. Let me spend some time. I love you so right. Gonna love you all.
ay, ay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That would never go away. It would never go away, man. All right. So I'm going to end the rivalry off with um, with this Nicki Minaj versus Joy and Reed. Oh, whatever. Um, Nicki Minaj tweeted um, basically how her cousin wasn't able to actually uh, get the vaccine because the condition he was in um basically will worsen his condition that he was on his predetermined condition if you on twitter you probably already know what it is because she really pretty much said it i think it was like std or something or whatever but she basically said man if um you're not sure about about it or you're not comfortable with it you know it's your decision don't be bullied into it pretty much you know just you know do it when you feel comfortable whatever Hold so on, the media. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure you clear. So you saying he got what? Um, I think he had some kind of. Uh, she said the cousin. Yeah, Sti. S- yeah, Sti. And I think because of the condition, he. Um, all right. I'm gonna just say. It. it said my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure oh, you're comfortable with your decision and not bullied. Now, she wasn't using that as a, like, a way of, you know, just showing. Enough. You know, some people just put up reasons why you shouldn't do the vaccine because they're just in, they're anti-vax um, pretty much. But she was just showing different sides of the spectrum. Like, all right, there's reasons why some people don't Got want it. to get vaxxed or whatever. But <clears throat> modern liberal media took that and ran with it. And the main, main person that just was the, that basically voiced it out um, was Joy Ann Reed saying that she has too big of a platform to be um, discouraging the black community from protecting themselves or whatever. And yeah, so in response, um, Nicki Minaj just put out previous tweets from Joy Ann and said, um, this was a tweet from Joy Ann when Trump was the president. I mean, will anyone, da, 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 anyone at all ever trust the CDC government again? And who on God's earth would trust a vaccine approved by the U.S. FDA? How do we get a vaccine distributed after this broken Trumpist nonsense has infected everything, even if Biden wins? Pretty much. So just pointing out that, hey, you were thinking. Yeah, you were a hypocrite right there. And then now it was against the same vaccine. Yeah. So she just put that out and she was just, you know, you know, you know, she got her fan base is like her shield or whatever. So they brought out more and more stuff and just pointed out how like the media is just trying to portray Nicki Minaj like she's totally anti-vax or or, or whatever. She she was like um, she was prepping for the VMAs and shot a video and then she got COVID and then. um matter of fact she um and sh- she got into like she wasn't able to like kiss and hold her baby because she got covid for that much and it's a new baby and everything and mm-hmm. she she even said to you know to go ahead get vaccinated a drake, a drake just told her that he got covid with the vaccine so it chill is. and i think that that's another reason why he probably wasn't too working with it and i mean there is cases where people um, it's just like with any vaccine or whatever. Some people actually get because it's like a little bit of the yeah, vaccine in it. So you can feel it. I know some people that didn't get it after being mm-hmm. vaccinated. Yeah. So everybody is, I mean, with that, I mean, just like with anything, it's a coin flip, you know, and everybody's body is different. There's, I, what I don't like is like 
liberal media is like saying that there isn't any circumstances and they're not even um like as far as like if somebody takes the vaccine like there's no other um situations where somebody took the vaccine and something bad happens or whatever uh. or, or you know what I'm saying? That's that's why I don't like about it. Like I, I you know, I definitely no. You got to be go fair about the information. Man. <clears throat> yeah, and I like think it should be more. Helps a lot, and, and it definitely mm-hmm. does do a lot to curb this constant spread. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like it don't make you like Superman or Superwoman. You still you still not immune to everything. Like you mm-hmm. still got to take then, some precautions and you know still be smart about shit. Yeah, and I, I and they should promote more ways outside of just the vaccine. To you know, help you. They have. Out. That's the dumb too. Uh, mm-hmm. For one, stop breathing in each other's face without masks. For two, mm-hmm. social <laughs> distance. Like they've mm-hmm. given us the protocol. Don't be in an enclosed space without ventilation. <laughs> like oh. they've given us the protocols. It's just we hard headed as fucking want to club and go to concerts and all this shit. Well, no, that's I ain't really what it I'm is. Just, like, I'm talking about like. Um, you know, if it's other like things that you can take or your, you know, to improve your diet or whatever, the ways to fight back, more information about that or whatever. And they do they have that out there, but I feel like they promote more the vaccine than that also. Because you know, those like, other ways don't prevent you from getting the damn COVID, bro. Mm-hmm. It might help you so that you don't die from that shit or so that you know your symptoms are easier mm-hmm. to deal with. But like the vaccine will actually keep your ass from you know, it, it gives you a, a better chance from not getting it. Like, mm-hmm. it actually does give you some type of an immunity. Like, echinacea and sea moss and stuff is good for just general maintenance health and, like, fighting off symptoms of certain shit. But, like, as far as prevention, mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, if it's a virus. Like, yeah, <laughs> you ain't gonna work your, work your way out, work out and, and lift weights your way out of that shit or eat your way out of, like, it's a virus. Yeah, true. If you if you put yourself in the conditions where that virus can then <clears throat> enter your body, then you have put yourself in them conditions. Keep your ass away from folks six feet away, and if you're within six feet, make sure you have on a fucking mask. Stop being hard headed and fighting it and fighting it, and just go ahead and just do what the hell they say, man. So we can get this shit up out of here, man. Going back to normal, and you can get your partner's mask right there from rtrayclothing.com Here, pretty much, just let y'all know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, um, and all right, more on. Let me just continue with the good and fuckery on the video game side. Tony Todd, the original Candyman, is actually playing Mm -hmm. Venom in a new Spider-Man Two video game. I'm just cool. putting that out. There. And I just found out like he is like a big voice actor, pretty yes. much. I, yes, I didn't is. even realize that. Like, like I known him as a voice actor, but then I didn't put the two and two together because I haven't <laughs> seen Candyman, the original, in a while. And then I like, oh, wait a minute, Tony Todd, Tony he's Todd. A, he's I know a every he's Tony. A lot of shit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, like, like he voiced a lot of like shoot cartoons. I watched on the low pretty much and along with that along with the spider-man 2 video game there's a wolverine video game coming out y'all know how much i love wolverine and that don't look yeah. dope it was only like tell you the truth it was only a little trailer but in the mm-hmm. trailer you see like wolverine at a bar and there's all these bodies on the floor or whatever and then somebody walks in and he's drinking like he's drinking at the bar or whatever and then dude walks in, and I think he's like talking junk. And next thing you know, the claws come out, pretty much. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, but I like, I like Wolverine bar scenes or whatever because, like, I had this comic book with him and Spider Man, and it was on his birthday, and he has that healing factor. So one moment in one box, you'll see him like talking drunk. And then the next moment, he's sober. Like, the next box, he's sober. Then the next moment, he's talking drunk. (laughs) The next moment, he's sober. Or whatever. Because of that healing factor. I was like, yo, this is a creative way of showing his healing factor. Pretty much. All right. So, 
Oh, oh, another good thing. Music. Anita Baker finally owns her masters to all of her catalog. Shout out Queen Anita. Mm-hmm. Now, um, want to get right into the fuckery. Uh, God of War Ragnarok is receiving racism because they got a black ca- character called Agraboda. A uh, little uh, son, Yeloki, has a little black girlfriend or whatever. And the creators of it was like, what y'all think everything in North mythology is it's all white? So, but in nerd culture, it's all it's it's weird because there's a minor little part of nerd culture that's racist. And it's funny because so all they do is receive a backlash games. from the racists. Yeah. Okay, got it. Just okay. the racist. I was like, that's what? it. <laughs> just the racist. Now the rest of no cur- nerd culture is just trolling the racist, which mm. it, it it comes out with hilarious outcomes, mm. pretty much. So, uh, racist big up to nerds, nerd culture. Get your life together. Because you make no sense. You can't be a nerd <laughs> and, and a racist. Like it just doesn't make any sense at all. Like, did y'all not I'll, watch Revenge of the Nerds? I whoop your head. Like, yeah. This is stupid. More into the fuckery. This is going to be the biggest part of fuckery, y'all. So, did y'all see Umar Johnson's um <laughs> wedding? Yes, I did. No, yes, man. I did see that Let fuckery me. of the year. And Let that me nigga this. don't get the fuck out of here with that. Let, Let me preface this. I am not for downing any black man from achieving his goals and dreams because evidently this has to be a goal and dream and it also has to be just for the look like this it, it, oh, it was a fake wedding me. it was definitely a fake wedding so Some that's, that's right. the start there it was definitely a fake wedding um it was definitely some bullshit, some bullshit ploy to take uh, basically attention away from the fact that it, the school still ain't open. Like he did all of that electric sliding and shuffling along with them tight ass tuxedo shoes on. And he did all that, you know, fake marriage and, and, and all of that extra shit. But the school still had a puddle in the gym floor the night before. The school still is not up to code to have anybody occupied. The school is still not educating not one black soul. So let's <laughs> let's keep focus here. It... Distractions. Distractions. I don't give a damn how much you get your damn, how much you do the wobble. <clears throat> Nigga, you said you got a school coming. This block party <laughs> don't don't change the fact that the school ain't here. And you throwing a block party to me just takes away from the fact that uh, HVAC still ain't right. And you're spending money on this block party bullshit, but HVAC still ain't right. So, man, fuck you, Uma. Fuck you, Uma. Well, um, get my $50 back. He did say something about the school, but the only thing he said was, y'all donate to the school. Why he had his two wives on each side. Now I don't know how this now, will... now the kids at the party gotta figure out why the, the hell this confused. lady is sitting there, why, why this dude's in there marrying two people, because you know they don't know nothing about no damn polygamy and shit. You five years old, you don't know what no damn polygamy is. All you know is supposed to be a mama and a daddy, a husband and a wife. You don't know nothing about that other shit, man. Like people be doing too much, man. Like without thinking about the repercussion of somebody else's family that may not that may not be part of what they teach in their kids or it may mm-hmm. not be part of their family structure and their, their family beliefs. So, like, I feel like, you know, you do what you want to do, man, but that, that got to be some type of responsibility and thought put behind it where you, like, yeah, man, like, maybe I don't got to do all this. Maybe I, maybe I could do this in more of an adult setting even, like, or do it in a setting where it's an adults only. Like if I'm maybe I do it at one of my conferences or whatever, my Pan African Fest, my conferences well, for just the adults. Yeah, I didn't see it. But if somebody give me some details on this shit. I didn't, I didn't see this bullshit. So what right. was it held at? All right. So uh, 
You remember <laughs> back when we were still doing Umar updates. Um, one of the last mm-hmm. updates was that he was going to be doing a block party on November in, in September, and the school was supposed mm-hmm. to open in September. Well, the school mm-hmm. definitely ain't opening, obviously. And he gave that he, he basically gave that update over the summer. It was like, yeah, the school ain't gonna be ready yet, so we shooting for 2022, but we're gonna have a block party on September 11th. Now, obviously, the tractors of Umar was kind of like, yeah, right, this will never happen. But basically, the block party happened. So he had a block party out there at the school on the little street he be calling E. Day Boulevard and Big Papa, Big Papa Road <laughs> or whatever the fuck he called that shit. <laughs> and uh, so basically, he had a, a block party out there. They had like, ve- like black vendors out there and shit. They had a DJ. They was doing like, they had like little kid, little black kids and stuff out there performing. They had um, the electric slide and the wobble, and uh, you know they had food out there. You know it was like a block party. Mm-hmm. But the a couple of things that just bothered me about it. All right, first of all, you're having a block party, but you got you you told everybody to bring the kids out there. But in now one of the videos that I've seen, have I seen the kids playing any of these games or doing any of these activities that were supposed to be geared toward them? So now you got them out here doing a bunch of shit that the adults like, but the kids is kind of just out here. If it's a family vibe, like a family vibe, right. Like, go ahead, get them something to do. Don't have them just sitting out there, especially if your whole thing is you're trying to open a school for the kids. You should have had some more stuff geared to the kids to at least... Mm-hmm. To almost like a good faith effort, like to just show, like, yo, I am really trying to do something about them. Like, even if you're going like games out there, maybe you had like a bunch of booths set up where the kids could do interactive things where they're learning about their history or learning about black uh, Afrocentric uh, values or teachings at these little stations. You know what I mean? But you could have did something that actually geared toward them. So you already had that fucked up. Then on top of that, you the night before you got videos posted of you and the donors or whoever else it is that they are helping you out shoveling water out the damn door again. <laughs> so yet again, that tells me now Wait, you got to it. So it ain't no telling what that place smelled like or what type of other mold and bacteria was in the air in that gym. Children. And that's where you got all the decorations and that's like your stage in there. So then oh, on top of that, now you, you end the night yeah. off with a wedding, quote unquote, a stage wedding to two ladies. Um real fast up, real uh, I said, oh, this dude is no <laughs> hell no, hell no. This nigga had his vibe, had them niggas took pictures. He they gave some he gave some fake vows to the ladies, talking about uh no child support and some other dumb shit. And um Kiss both of them on the cheek. It was a it was a great value Kanye event. Yeah, man, that shit was corny. <laughs> as spectacle. Hell, man. Like he was doing way too much, but not enough. You know, when you were um talking about he should have had uh like things for the kids, like events for the kids and stuff like that. You know what that remind me of? Or you know that either that one auntie or that one relative, or even today. That one person you know that would pick any reason to throw like a cookout or kickback. Oh, my son, he it's his fifth birthday. Oh, what up? We having a cookout, man. They get rid of all, they do the little birthday part or whatever. They just say happy birthday, give them cake, and then the rest of the night is just the cookout. The kids with, gotta go. No to the room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Kids, kids That's what just it need to come like. back out for dinner. I told y'all not to come out that room. It's my Damn. birthday. Your birthday in the room. <laughs> you be saying I heard. There you go. Back in our day, it was like, put the other tape in. Now it's like, <laughs> y'all, y'all find a Wi-Fi password. Right. <laughs> Stay right. On <laughs> Look, y'all, y'all got the TV, the tablet, and the game in there. Y'all should be all right. Find yeah. y'all something to do. No, you can't have the punch. Don't taste it. Don't taste that punch. <laughs> that punch ain't for you. Punch go punch the shit out of them kids. And them kids are there. Loopy as fuck playing Mario. 
Uh, that <laughs> Mario Kart crashed into everybody. Niggas in there, that sounds kind of dope. Niggas in there playing Minecraft, all their creations leaning to the side and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they drunk as they drunk as heck, talking junk on Fortnite and Call of Duty. <laughs> Nigga playing Roblox, playing Roblox. They character just standing in one spot in the corner, playing Fortnite. Birthday, motherfucker. Can't shoot. <laughs> Ain't nobody shooting nobody. I don't care, man. Those cookouts used to be lit when I was young, oh. man. I don't care. <laughs> man, my first drink was at the cookout. Mm. Yeah. No. If y'all, if that's right, that punch right there, with that big glass, that big grandma glass punch glass that they had with the big glass spoon or whatever that tastes like ginger ale and Tahitian treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hawaiian no one, punch. That wasn't no Tahitian treat. It was a treat. It right. wasn't. It wasn't just ginger ale. That was that. Put, that was that Seagram gin. Yeah, <laughs> mixed with the ginger ale. <laughs> That's a yeah, good man. punch. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, that 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 was the big that was the big fuckery. For this week, pretty much, Did I get everything. Oh, Ooh, Gucci Mane and Jeezy and Rick Ross and Boosie and Two Chains are going on tour. That's oh, right. that's Ooh. a good tour. Gucci oh, Mane, Jeezy, cool. Rick Ross, Boosie, Two Chains, and more. They say and more, which is funny because oh. Jeezy used to beef with Gucci Mane and Rick Ross. That ought to be good. Mm-hmm. I think I think I was in Atlanta when they actually beefed that one time. Hmm. I think they were when they leave. It was, it was either G, Rick Ross was involved, but somebody was beefing with Rick Ross at that time. I think it was Jeezy, but I'm not sure. Right on. No, I'm sure, but yeah, um, yeah, they all the men's and um, pretty much they're going on tour. And the other thing is, I heard it once. I'm gonna have to listen to it again. But Freddie Gibbs supposedly dissed Kendrick. Or whatever for that last uh verse he did on baby king song baby king got a i'm not baby king, but um kendrick he got a line that says that um who got a grammy last year y'all just a visitor and i think i don't know i think freddie took that as a shot but freddie been taking everybody as a shot like when nas won or whatever he got on nas's track flipped the Flip, flip one why of his is tracks. That a, why is that a diss to Freddie? Did he like? He um uh, he got nominated. He got nominated for the Grammy. Last got year. it. Got it. Yeah, okay. it was him. And I like if it wasn't Nas, it would have been him. Pretty much. So gotcha. he just took it. I don't think he really took it seriously because Freddie Gibbs is hilarious and he don't be taking anything seriously. But he, I think he just let himself be known that hey man. Hey, I want to be number one also. That's what I'm here for. Pretty you much. You had to yeah. get some more commercial success to be number one. Yeah. But I mean, he he breaking out. He had a good year last year. He had a he had a good lit. He just just yeah, off. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about what a good year is. I, I I feel like, you know, I think if he keeps going and going, it's just gonna progress and get better and better or whatever. But for you to get that much press on like basically supposed to be like an underground sound and album like with just alchemist and and mad lib or whatever well that one was alchemist but he's just been putting out that type of vibe but Mm -hmm. for you to get this much press and it's not like commercial hits if you can do that with non-commercial like songs imagine what he could do with commercial songs so i feel like after a while now his name is out there. He's just going to get bigger and bigger anyway. Gotcha. Much. But yeah, that's the end. That's the Good and Fuckery, episode 43. That's the good and the fuckery. Yeah.